If the baler is going to be moved to another location, turn on the engine and use the hydraulic controls to latch the door and lower the plunger as far as it will go. Remember that the controls and the hydraulic system for raising and lowering the trailer bed are located in the right side of the storage box. Wrap staff have attached a chain to the storage box lid to prevent it from opening so far that it can get mangled by the trailer bed as it is raised. Be sure that the chain or a strap is in place to prevent the lid from opening too far. Remove the handheld control device from the box and push the up button. Raise the trailer bed until the two parts of the safety lock are aligned. Insert the trailer bed locking pin to lock the trailer in its raised position for travel. A three-quarter ton truck or larger is recommended for towing the baler trailer unit. A half ton truck with a V8 engine can also be used, but don't try towing with a six cylinder engine. The V6 engine just doesn't have sufficient towing power. The tow vehicle must be equipped with a tow package sufficient to pull loads of at least 7,000 pounds. The package should include a standard 7 pin electrical plug to power the lights, turn signals, and brakes. In addition, RAP has supplied each of its balers with a 2 and 5 16 inch ball attached to a removable ball mount with a 1 inch rise. The raised ball mount should be used in place of the standard pickup truck drop hitch because drop hitches are typically too low for the Bigfoot, causing an uneven distribution of weight on the two sets of axles and leading to excessive wear on the tires. To hitch the trailer to the tow vehicle, start with the trailer bed in its raised position. Be sure the wheels of the trailer are blocked with wheel chocks so the trailer won't roll. The trailer jack should be already in a position stabilizing the trailer tongue. Turn the jack handle to raise the trailer tongue enough to clear the tow ball on the tow vehicle. Back the tow vehicle so that the tow ball on the truck is directly under the coupler of the trailer. It's helpful to have two people, the driver and a guide, working together to line up the tow vehicle with the trailer hitch. Turn the jack handle to lower the trailer hitch onto the tow ball. Secure the hitch in its lock position by inserting the hitch locking clip in the holes in the hitch latch. Attach the safety chains on the trailer to the receptor loops on the tow vehicle. Attach the brake breakaway cable on the trailer to the connector on the tow vehicle. Connect the 7 pin electrical harness that controls the brakes, brake lights and other electrical components. Be sure the foot of the trailer jack is clear of the ground so the jack can pivot to horizontal. Use the retaining pin to secure the jack to the mount on the trailer frame. For road travel, remove the jack and store it in the toolbox. Remove the wheel chocks or blocks. Go through the daily maintenance and pre-operation checklist. When everything is set, the tow vehicle and trailer can be driven away, readjusting the trailer brakes as needed. Once the trailer is hitched to the tow vehicle, it does not need to be unhitched to use the baler. The manufacturer recommends that the baler remains hitched while baling, and RAP staff recommends this as well for the following reasons. The tow vehicle provides stability and support and prevents the trailer from rolling. If the unit is unhitched, the trailer jack is the sole source of support and can't provide the same stability as a truck. There's a great deal of lateral stress on the jack if the trailer should begin to roll when the trailer bed is lowered, and if the baler is jostled by a forklift or other machinery, as might happen when the finished bale is being moved out of the way. And the trailer tongue can spring up without warning if the bed is in its up position and there's any load in the compaction chamber. However, there are also times when it makes sense to unhitch the trailer. For example, when the baler is put in storage for the winter or when one tow vehicle is exchanged for another. So let's go through the steps. Block the wheels of the trailer with wheel chocks so the trailer won't roll. Attach the trailer jack to the jack mount on the trailer frame. Pivot the jack to the vertical position. Secure it with the retaining pin. If the ground is soft, put a board under the foot of the trailer jack. Disconnect the safety chains. The breakaway brake cable and the electrical hookup from the tow vehicle. 
pull the hitch locking clip from the trailer hitch. Release the hitch locking mechanism and replace the clip in the same hole so it doesn't get lost. Turn the jack handle until the trailer hitch visually clears the top of the tow ball on the tow vehicle. It needs to be high enough that the truck can move freely without dragging the trailer. Leave the jack in place to stabilize the trailer while it is unhitched. After double checking the trailer is secure and all the connections are clear of the tow vehicle, the vehicle may be driven away. The trailer has the recessed lights, turn signals, and brakes required for on road travel. Before taking the baler on the road, the driver should do a final walk around to be sure everything is set. Go through the operational checklist, checking the oil and gas levels, the lights and hydraulic system, the security of the hitch, and so on. And finally, check that the trailer bed is in its raised position, as needed for road travel. This sounds silly, but it's an easy thing to miss. If you're leaving a site where baling was done, keep in mind that finished bales should be transported in the bed of the tow vehicle or in a tow trailer, not in the compaction chamber or elsewhere on the trailer. No more than several hundred pounds of plastic should be left in the baler for road travel. The reason for that is extra weight on the trailer will make the trailer difficult to handle. And there are a few other things to keep in mind. The driver of the tow vehicle should make big loops when turning, both because tight turns wear on the tandem trailer wheels, and also because the short trailer turns quickly when backing up and can jackknife on a tight turn.